Welcome back, great people, to another learning episode with Mr. Knight. Now, today we're going to look at symbiosis and feeding relationships. Now, just a means of reminder or recap is that uh, symbiosis is a close living or feeding relationship between organisms in an ecosystem or an area all right so we, we spoke about this in a previous lesson so this is putting it together and go specifically on looking at their types of symbiosis all right so the list that we're going to look at today includes mutualism parasitism commensalism neutralism competition and predation and just remember that symbiotic relationship refers to either feeding or living relationship bet, um, among or between organisms within an ecosystem. All right, the first one is mutualism. Now, as the word suggests, mutual, that means both have mutual benefit. And so um, this is where both organisms benefit from each other. Okay, so that relationship, both of them are benefiting. And we have two examples to look at. Um, so we're going to look at the example of a coral polyp and, and a zooxanthellae. So typically speaking, um, or just to give a bit of information right here, is that coral polyp are animals, okay, while zooxanthellae are algae. And algae pretty much are plant like okay they behave just like plants they photosynthesize they make their own food so they're autotrophs okay and i wanted to bear in mind when i explain this relationship here and so the coral polyp being animal and the zooxanthellae being plant like now as you know the relationship between plant and animal is that the plant will provide oxygen for the animal so the zooxanthellae they will produce oxygen for the coral polyp when they photosynthesize. Now, another benefit to the coral polyp is that the zooxanthellae, they give the coral the beautiful, vibrant colors, okay? So the zooxanthellae provide colors for um, the polyp. Now, in return, the polyp, the zooxanthellae are benefiting in that the, the polyp will release waste and the waste will contain nutrients rich in nitrogenous waste and so or nitrogenous molecule such as nitrates and uh, the zooxanthellae will feed on these nitrogenous waste and use them to grow and develop and sustain their life okay so both are benefiting also the zooxanthellae will receive carbon dioxide from the coral polyp okay and so both of them are exchanging gases, all right? And um, the zooxanthellae will have a place to live, a, a very safe place to live as well. So they get um, a habitat as well. Now, another example here, as you look at it, is um, a bee on a flower. And bee, bee, when they fly on flower, they go searching for nectar. And so these flowers, which are typically brightly colored and um, sweet smelling, will produce some sort of nectar and that will attract um, the bee and when the bee will land on the flower the the anther of the flower will have some pollen grains and the pollen grains will be attached to the leg or body parts of the bee if you notice um, the bee is kind of furry and so therefore um, it will be attracted to um, the body parts especially the legs and so on right here what I'm pointing at is where you will see a lot of um, pollen grains and of course the bee will now pollinate um, the plant so the bee is getting nectar while the plant is able to pollinate for reproduction okay so both of them receive some sort some sort of benefit in this um, relationship now another one that we're looking at on the list which is parasitism 
and parasitism this is where one organism benefit while the other is being armed so it's kind of a one-sided situation in a sense if you think about it in that and for ex for the example if you look at the ticks on the dog you know quite gruesome but um the tick is absorbing is absorbing the blood or the nutrients from the blood of the dog right and so the tick the ticks they are getting nutrients while the dog is being affected how is it how is the dog being affected now one the dog is losing nutrients from its blood right and when you lose nutrients i mean you could lose iron it becomes you become weak and so on so the dog could become weak and it could become sick otherwise a matter of fact the tick on the dog um puncturing the the, the skin of the dog can also create an avenue or an entry point for bacteria and other microbes that could cause other diseases and sickness okay and of course the dog is could lose the dog could also lose its air because while it losing nutrients um there will be some deficiency disease showing up in the dog as well right and another, another example here is the mosquito and humans uh, mosquitoes um really really annoying creatures but the mosquitoes now however now they suck the blood from us or even the animals they do suck the blood from now why mosquitoes suck blood it's kind of a strange um phenomenon or you know pretty much things maybe we don't think about but the mosquitoes suck the blood to receive protein and iron all right and they use those substances now to make their eggs okay so they want to de develop their eggs so they can reproduce and sustain their population now as well but while doing this and they're benefiting um the human being can be armed um in one in that some persons are, are allergic to to mo uh, mosquito bites or even insect bites generally and not only that losing blood you also lose nutrients and also the mosquito could transmit diseases such as malaria and dengue fever as well all right all right so of course um, the mosquito could be a vector for diseases all right now the other on the list is commensalism and commensalism is pretty much a cool kind of a relationship i would say uh, because this is where one organism really benefits and the other is really unaffected okay so three pictorial examples are here one um, is the tree frog within a leaf and the, the tree frog could hide in leaves right and the benefit of a tree frog is this is protection generally and one is could be protection from predators and also protection from the sun because they in the leaf they get some form of shade all right to maintain moisture in the body and all of that especially if a leaf is curled like one is shown um, and curled leaves tend to um, capture water and so the, the the frog could be there just to cool down or simply just to hide from predators especially if they camouflage with the leaf okay and another example here is juvenile fish within the roots of mangroves um, the juvenile fish will use the mangrove roots as a means of safe haven okay because larger fish will be unable to passage through the mangroves to capture these small fish um, for food all right and so they stay there until they're big enough to venture out in the wider ocean all right so it's kind of cool but the mangroves pretty much unaffected um, because you know the the fish is just there not necessarily disturbing the the mangrove roots really or even taking anything away from the mangrove roots they're just there as means of um, protection and just a means of safety even for them to survive enough or to reach certain size or maturity uh, before they could venture out in the wider ocean right so it's like a nursery ground for the fish okay and another example here is the egrets now egrets and cows is there's a pretty cool relationship they have um as i said commensalism is really cool and interestingly cows when they when they graze on on grass which feeding on grass really as they sieve through the grass some of these grass leaves may have insects on them like caterpillars and so on right and so as they sieve through the grass because the, the remember now the cow is herbivore the cow is not interested in eating caterpillars right and so sieving through the grass blades or the grass leaves 
the, the caterpillars or worms that may on them or even other insect really they fall onto the ground or get disturbed and become visible and so the egrets now will eat those um, insects or caterpillars right and so effortlessly the, the, the cows are providing food for the egrets but the, the cow is not benefiting from it really the cow is eating his own thing doing his own thing and um, the egrets just stand there wait patiently and capture the food so it's kind of a cool it's really a cool cool relationship right really nice and, and, and cool interesting indeed all right another one here is neutralism and neutralism here is as i said neutrally either here or there so in this um, relationship there this is where organism can coexist but do not directly affect each other okay they do not directly affect each other each other now remember this now folks in in any ecosystem there is a relationship between organism but once you talk about symbiosis we're talking about the direct relationship or the direct effect so for example um the the butterfly with the lion they're not affecting each other directly because the lion pretty much don't eat uh, butterflies that's one and make it even more interesting is that is that both the lion and the butterflies they have different food sources so generally neutralism will look at organism with different food sources right because they're not disturbing each eat each other now generally speaking um herbivore and carnivores they form suitable or i would say perfect neutralistic relationship because they are on different spectrum of the feeding chain okay they're really on different spectrum of the feeding chain they have no interest in each other really okay more than just probably looking at each other you know just for viewing and, and sightseeing but nothing else interesting um is there for food because these organisms are looking for food so definitely folks um the butterfly and the lion is a beautiful example for neutralistic relationship um, uh, an adult conch for example um, is just there in the bottom of the bottom of the ocean grazing on um, algae while a snapper is searching for other type of food okay so they're there in the same ecosystem same environment but really do not have any interest in each other at all okay all right um, competition um, which is quite the next intriguing i would say all of these relationships are intriguing relationship in some way at the start right um some of them are more gruesome than the other of course but they are cool in their own rights and so competition for example this is where organisms compete for the same resources or resource within the ecosystem now generally speaking and just uh, uh, a rule of thumb right here i will say um generally right is that competition right once you're competing in any competition folks um the the, the 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 things or the persons who are competing they go for the same thing okay that's what the competition is we are competing for the same thing and so in nature as well organism compete for the same resource and so hence we have a competition and so for example the cow and the and the, the sheep they are grazing on the same type of grass for example and so if the population of cows should increase or the population of the sheep should increase then you realize then the competition become even much stronger all right or stiffer and hence if if they're competing more for the same resources then you can have scarcity um, the resource could become scarce and once resource becomes scarce then it can lead to things like starvation okay right and so on and of course some organism can become malnourished because um, you ever notice like a litter of dogs and um, the pup that do not get enough food um, becomes malnourished and, and not looking so good and so on so and the one that always be more dominant will be the one looking nice because they compete stronger they're the fittest in the competition and so the same thing happens in nature folks and so even the example of a lion um, a lion and hyena for example um, the hyena 
is really like a cheeky um, type of animal because they tend to wait around for the lion to catch the prey first and then they will want to dive in and want to eat um, scraps from the, the lion but sometimes the lion may not catch may not have a big catch and so the lion may not get sufficient food or its desired food because it has to be sharing between um, in itself and the hyenas and so on right all right so gen gen generally you're looking at once you talk about competition it is safe for you to mention they are off they are looking after going after the same resource and that's key when talk about competition you're going after the same thing okay that's very important to remember folks all right the next one right here is predation okay and predation this one is kind of a little bit i would say on the gruesome side of things because really really um for predation in terms of definition this is where an organism which is called a predator hunts kills and eat another organism pretty much we do that as well eh? because we kill chicken now we eat them but anyways um the organism that is being eaten is called a prey okay it's called a prey and of course predation is kind of a similar to parasitism okay it's kind of similar but there's also a difference folks um the similarity between parasitism and predation is that one organism is always benefiting while the other is being armed okay that's the similarity between both now the difference between predation and parasitism is that predation there's a hunting okay there's a hunting right but in parasitism the 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 parasite will live in or on its host okay so there's no hunting necessarily it just is there in or on the host and just absorb nutrients or or affect different structures and so on right so an example of uh predation here is the cheetah and 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 the, and the deer and of course poor cheetah will be eaten um by the mighty day but um, the deer will eaten by the mighty cheetah right and you know unfortunately but yes um the orc eating snake the snake you know it wait seek hunt capture and eat the snake okay and of course if you're a snake lover um then of course i know you feel i'm sorry about that but yes okay and folks um it is always my pleasure to deliver to you and i hope these examples of symbiosis were really great and if you're inclined to watch more videos and keep um, updated and progressing in your lessons please just hit the subscribe button okay and i see you i will definitely see you in the next lesson i'm looking forward to see you again all right take care